God asks us to believe that what the Bible says is true, even when it doesn't feel true. And how often is that the case? It doesn't always feel true, what he says about us, um, what he asks us to do even. It's hard sometimes. It's challenging. But he says we can in him. He gives us the ability. If we get to know God, the object of our faith, we begin to realize we can completely trust him. How did Abraham completely contemplate sacrificing his son Isaac. He had learned by active faith and experience that God was loving and could be trusted. Have you ever thought of that story, really? Like if he told you to go put your child on an altar and sacrifice him, would you go to do it? And have that kind of faith that somehow God was going to work this out and either bring him back to life or however he was going to do it. That's faith. Faith, trust, and believe are action words, aren't they? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Just like I said, don't look at what somebody says, but, we'll, but what they do. The actions aren't that we have to do a certain set of things. The action is out of a heart that believes and trusts, we bear fruit. We are perfect. We mess up. We have grace. We get back on track. Right? This little girl came to me when she was five years old. She has severe autism. The first session I was like, it was when I was fairly new to this too, and I went, she laid on the ground. She wouldn't go near the fence. We usually go out and pick our horse. So I just went and stood by the gate, and the horses came up, and I was talking to them and petting them, and then I would talk to her and just keep my back, you know, not look at her. Finally, by the end of the session, she had crawled over to the fence and put her hand out to pet one of the horses. Seven years later, when she came for her first session this spring, I just cried. Because what the world said she was going to be is not who she is. They said she wouldn't function on her own. She wasn't going to be able to do anything. You would never know she has autism. She looks me in the eye. Mm -hmm. She rides better than most of my kids. Her mom believed for that miracle. I believed for that miracle. And so did this little girl. She's amazing. And her mom will let me tell you anything about her. Her name is Zoe, I can tell you. Either, because she's put her story of um, coming there on Facebook and everything. Okay. Our daily choice, and we're getting to the end of our time. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, <coughs> his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. When you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. We have to know who we are, or we're going to be like that, waving in the wind. Every time somebody gets us off course by what they say about us. Every time the enemy hits us with something hard, we're going to go over here. We can, we can stay here. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go off some. But we can stay steadier the more we know who we are in Christ. Those who live, who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. 
The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. The law of sin and death is overcome by a greater law, right? Through Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. That law couldn't save us, could it? The greater law was Jesus. There's not Jesus plus anything. It's only Jesus. This girl was sexually abused by a family member. She was cutting, severely cutting, very broken, and she finally told someone. She loved the horses, loved that she felt safe with them, and she eventually believed the freedom she could have in Jesus to forgive that person, to feel clean, not used, not broken, but a new creation in Christ. A daughter of the king, she chose the truth. The battle. If we un don't understand that there, we are in a battle, or how that battle works, we are very likely to become a casualty, to be neutralized in our walk with the Lord. The deceiver puts thoughts in our heads, temptation, accusation, and deception. He tries to get us to sin, and then he accuses us, right? Yeah, you call yourself a Christian? Yeah, you screwed up again. We don't have to believe that lie. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of even, evil in the heavenly realms. This is Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You know the movie? <laughs> we don't fight battles with guns. We fight battles with the armor of God. And today I can honestly tell you that the times are less and less often when we even take the bait and get in an argument or let him get between us. Our defense. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Know that Satan is a defeated foe. Know your position in Christ. Guard your mind. Turn on the light. Take your thoughts captive. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I have permission to show you this picture. She was very excited that I was going to show you this picture, in fact. This young woman is learning about her position in Christ. She also had a lot of has a lot of labels that have been put on her. But she's learning to take her thoughts captive. Those thoughts would go all over the place. She's learning that that's the enemy. And she doesn't have to listen to that voice. And she loves the horses. She loves my dogs, too. She will stay all day if I don't say, okay, you have to go. Um, but... She's just come so far. Breaking the hold of the past. So, Freedom in Christ is a 10-week life-changing discipleship course, okay? I highly recommend that you get a group together and do this. You don't need to be... I'm a, I'm a trained encourager with Freedom in Christ. So... I get calls to do freedom appointments for people that I don't even know. That doesn't mean that you can't walk through this book with a friend or yourself. Okay. These are the steps that this book goes through. It's all scripture <coughs> because what is going to clean up our ugly mess? learning what's real and what's a lie, 
deception versus truth, bitterness versus forgiveness, how many of us are mostly hung up in life because of unforgiveness? Mm -hmm. If we can't forgive, there's a blockage even in our relationship with our Father. He doesn't stop loving us, but he says we have to forgive, and we can trust him to help us. And the forgiveness is getting the hook out of us. It's God's job to vindicate that person. They're never going to ask you to, for forgiveness, probably. Rebellion versus submission. <laughs> How much of our rebellion do we not even look at? You know, not being a submissive wife, not following the laws of lands. It just goes through a lot of things that we don't think about. We've been so conditioned to do them. Pride versus humility. Mm, I wouldn't have any pride. Yeah, right. Bondage versus freedom. There's so much bondage. I, there was a lady in the, in the training I took. She was a pastor's wife. And she had gotten into um, prescription drugs because she was still believing the lie that she was fat from being in dance class as a kid and having someone tell her she was fat because she was this tall, thin, bigger boned girl. She wasn't that little tiny petite thing. She was still believing a lie and, and keeping those secrets because I'm a pastor's wife. I can't have this problem. It happens to, it can happen to anyone. We all have something. Curses versus blessings. A freedom appointment is much like surgery. I love this. The main difference is that the patient is conscious and doing the work. We rely on the real surgeon, God. And oh, this is a picture of my husband speaking at Rockfest in Fargo. Okay, this is a man who went from living on the poor side of Fargo with a single parent and being a naughty boy and drugs and alcohol meets Jesus in jail. Amen. It's a great story. Now he's speaking in front of people and telling his story. At first I was like, you what? <laughs> I already kn knew how he loved Jesus and I saw who he was by his church family, all the Bible studies he went to. So I saw who he really was. But when he told me a story, wow, okay. That's not who he is today. And I kind of struggled with him telling his story. We have to keep secrets, right? No. Do I want him to keep secrets so that he can't help somebody else? Every time he speaks, somebody calls and comes to see us and goes through this or somebody is set free. We have to tell our story too. And I'm 10 minutes over, girls. I'm sorry. So walking in freedom. There's things in your packet uh, um, that are tools. Like I said, get a group together and go through this. It's amazing. Um, renew your mind. The, the word is, there's power in the word of God. Life in the word. It demolishes strongholds. Um, that's what we need to defeat the enemy and his lies. Mm -hmm. The ways of thinking and acting that have become deeply ingrained in our mind from our environment traumatic experiences of sin. They become flesh patterns based on lies. We believe about ourselves or the world around us. We are like deep ruts in the road that are hard to pull our car out of. How hard is it to get out of that rut we've been in forever? But we can do it in Christ. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. So what next? 
This is the last slide. So we make freedom a way of life. It's not just something we talk about. And we are appointed to bear fruit, right? He didn't call us to faith to sit and not do anything with it. We've got to tell people about him. So knowing who we are in Christ, being transformed by the renewing of our mind, having a life goal to become more and more like Jesus, not to be a good mom, you can be that, but that goal can be blocked, right? Be truly fulfilled, not by serving yourself, but by serving others. Choose peace, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. This is our facilities, and we call it Sunshine Farm Refuge. And there are um, pamphlets, if you'd like to take one, that tell more about our facility. And the, I have books back there just to look at. I don't have any to sell, but that's all um, the Freedom of Christ, Neil Anderson um, material. All of it is so good. There's um, the marriage Freedom for your marriage. We take couples through this. We've had couples that were on the verge of divorce that went through this and were set free. And so you, it's an amazing tool. But look at any of that. Thank you for all of your time. I'm sorry I went over. Um, yeah, thank you. So much. Oh, Q&A time? We're already over? <laughs> what do you want to know, Karen? You already know. No, I have a question. <laughs> is the freedom of Christ, would that be something that, would you invite an unbelieving friend to that? Or is it yes. mostly for believers? The first two courses deal with, basically we talked about what we went through, the, the fall, our sinful condition. If they get past that and they haven't made a decision for Christ, they aren't really going to get anything out of it. But you don't, we don't know, right? Right, it's pretty heavy for an unbeliever. That would be up, I think you'd have to leave that up to them. If they want to keep coming, because we've had people that we question, but it's not for me to know what their heart condition is. 